Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our monthly Civilian Oversight Commission meeting. I'd like to uh, call us to order, and um, but before we start, I'd like to do what we've been tra doing traditionally, is like taking a moment when I ring the bell to uh, have a moment of silence, feel grounded, put your feet on the, on the floor, we, uh, some folks travel far to get here. Um, so let's have a moment of silence and meditation together.
I'd like to uh, invite Commissioner Tolentino to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Just like to call your attention, we have the code of conduct that's on the, I believe it's up on the screen. No, it's up on the screen for this morning's meeting. And um, just a reminder to everyone, when you come, come up to speak, uh, your name will be called. And uh, we, we've been giving three minutes per person and we respectfully request that you adhere to those three minutes. If perhaps you go over, I'll, I'll ring my little bell to remind you, and if you would just uh, stop talking at that point. Thank you so much. Okay, so let's turn to uh, agenda item number one, which is the approval of the February 26th, 2019 meeting minutes. Is there a motion to approve? Move approval. There is. Second. Is there any discussion? Everyone in favor? Oh, sorry? Okay. All right. No discussion. Everyone in favor, please say aye. 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 Any abstentions? Abstentions. For absence? Uh, any nays? Okay, so moved. Minutes are approved. Um, and I just want to remind folks too that <clears throat> if you do want your name attached to any commentary in the minutes, uh, to, this terms to to the to the public, uh, please let us know. Uh, we have our uh, we have our staff here that can uh, um, make a note of that if you want to be in the minutes. We have one speaker for. Uh, Item one. Oh, we do? Greg Allen. Good morning. Um, there's a paragraph in the minutes that I was concerned about. It was commenting on uh, ICE in our jails as being some political, uh, an abused political uh, influence in our jail system. I don't agree with that comment in that paragraph, and I don't agree that uh, ICE is a negative in our jail system. The paragraph is an outrageous one describing how ICE intimidates people in the jail system. Well, if you're a policeman, you're wearing a uniform, the uniform alone intimidates anybody. It's meant to demand respect, and it's meant to intimidate. So the paragraph is a little bit outrageous and it needs to be addressed and I don't agree with, I don't like it in the minutes at all. Mr. David A. Budd, who commented and highlighted on the ICE involvement, I don't see any highlights. I want to know what he's highlighting because it's outrageous what he said about our ICE. I want somebody from ICE to defend his paragraph commenting on their what they do. I want someone to represent ICE and respond to that paragraph or take the paragraph out. It doesn't belong there. Thank you. I, I would just like uh, to report that our minutes are simply a summary of the conversations and discussions that the commission had. It's not a transcript, so this merely summarizes what, what, what occurred. It's not an opinion of the uh, commission itself. May I address that? Yeah. Because you, you commented that it's an opinion that doesn't belong there. It's not my opinion, and it doesn't belong there. It's, it's inappropriate at best. Please look at it. Oh, okay, thank, thank you for your comment. I just want to be clear, it is not the opinion of the commission. It is simply a summary of what occurred at the meeting. 
Thank you. <clears throat> okay, now we're going to move to. We have public comment still, right? This is public comment, right? We're about to start public comment. We're going to start public comment now, and uh, Ms. Williams, will you please call? Uh, our first speaker, Vaughn Beck, followed by Greg Allen, followed by Michael Greer. Good afternoon. I'd like to say there's what I understand is a new sheriff in town with his shiny new badge. Well, it doesn't represent the legit legal Americans in this city of Chicago West Coast. To the front self serving empty suits that continuously give the little digit to true law enforcement ICE, who diligently attempt to maintain law and order. Or like the way, Sheriff, you said you would physically remove ICE from the jails. We don't like violence or threats. Where is your love? Oh yes, you know all about violence. That shiny new badge is not shiny. It's a target. Thank you very much. Thank you. Greg Allen, followed by Michael sure. Greer, followed Thank by Thank you Robert for staying and listening to our public comments. Uh, I appreciate your involvement in listening to the public. I too am concerned with your taking ice out of our jail. Uh, your progressive um, format to remove ice to me is uh, a very a defiant act of against your oath of public safety. You took an oath of public safety, allowing criminal undocumented people out on the streets is not keeping me safe at all. Now I know you want to reduce some crimes so that they too cannot fall under the uh, scrutiny of ICE. I think that's an outrageous practice to reduce crimes. Now we have more criminals on the street. Domestic violence, that's one of the other crimes you want to reduce. And uh, I'm concerned that uh, we're not going down the road of keeping the citizens safe, that we're more concerned about whether we have enough truth or trust forms in the jail system, when we ought to be concerned with uh, uh, some kind of uh, comment to our sheriff for taking ICE out of our jails. Uh, association of sheriffs say that that's not safe for the citizens, and he's gone against his own uh, sheriff's association by removing ICE. Um, I'm, I'm concerned uh, that where these criminals are going, what they're doing, we all know they reoffend, and they're reoffending against citizens and their uh, other undocumented people as well. We saw Pomona become the second most dangerous uh, city this year. Now, you all, that all happened on your watch. Your watch, Mr. Uh, Alice. Now, what are we doing to reduce crime? Allowing undocumented criminals to be out on our streets? Is this how we reduce crime? Common sense tells you that's outrageous. And uh, I, I, for one, can't believe that uh, you're going to support SB 54 when 124 charged cities have kicked it to the curb and asked their sheriffs to also not not do it because to do it would be against your your uh, oath for uh, uh, federal federal law. You can't have it both ways. You're either breaking federal law or you're breaking state law. Mr. Chandler is a judge in the Orange area. He found SB 54 to be unconstitutional, and we don't want to eat in this in LA either. So please, uh, 247B. You mentioned that. I'd like to see that come into play in LA. Thank you. Yes, Michael Greer, followed by Rob Vincent, followed by Paul Sauf. Yes, I wanted to comment on uh, Robert Fonder, Commissioner Robert Fonder's letter. I appreciate what he had to say here. And may I quote uh, 
recommendations one, nine, and 10 are unwise. Adversely affect public safety and go well beyond what is required by state law. These recommendations have the effect of protecting convicted aliens not legally in the US. Indeed, the effect of the recommendations is to shield aliens who have been convicted of serious criminal activity from being deported. Adopting these recommendations will make our community less safe. This is what I keep saying when I come here. When you, uh, Sheriff Jeff Dean of Ventura, he told us that there are no, there are no minor criminals in our jails. The ones that are being released into our community are serious criminals. I, I keep asking, what is the reason for that? Why in the world do we want serious criminals released into our communities? They should be turned over to ICE. ICE is a law enforcement agency. It's not a political arm of anything. It's a law enforcement agency that is that is sworn to take to deport illegal alien criminals. Let them do their job. Yes, thank you. That's right. My name is Robin Biston, and I'm the California State Coordinator for the Remembrance Project. We honor and memorialize American citizens killed by those illegally in our country. Just last week in Washington, a deputy was murdered by a man illegally in our country. Citizens had called in that he was driving erratically and when officers arrived, he opened fire and killed Deputy Brian Thomas, age 42, who had three children that will now be growing up with out of father, and he also wounded another officer. Why are criminal aliens, Sheriff, allowed to roam free in our country? Last week in San Jose, a woman by the name of Bambi Larson was murdered in her own home by a man illegally in our country from El Salvador. It was reported nine times ICE had issued a detainer on this man when he was in custody. Three times in the LA County jails, six times in the Santa Clara jails. No law enforcement returned this man over to ICE. Subsequently, this woman was murdered brutally in her own home. She leaves behind two children. That's five American children robbed of parents last week, permanently separated from their families through no fault of their own. I'm wearing a shirt today of Christina Pena. She was 13 years old in the Salinas area when an illegal alien brutally raped her and left her for dead in an artichoke field. I'm bringing her up today because Raul Rodriguez and I, we're headed to Sacramento in about one hour. We have to leave early. We're going to be at a meeting with John Pena, the father of this beautiful young 13-year-old. So we are saying to, to you, Sheriff, protect us from criminal aliens. Why are they allowed to be out on the streets? We have had enough. We've lost enough American lives, and the blood is on your hands. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Paul followed by Raul Rodriguez Jr., followed by John Lewis.
they see a problem in the neighborhood, as they call police, they don't know how to deal with it themselves. We have whole entire states in other parts of the world and countries where there are no law enforcement, they're doing fine, because there are blocks of community justice that deal with those things. And we also, I also want to highlight that not everybody that goes into the system will come back out to do further wrong with their moms. That's not the case with everybody. I came out, I haven't heard any blood since. I work to do the opposite these days. I work with young people to bring resources to make our communities better, to make our communities safer. Not everybody that enters the system will come out with this propensity to do harm, which is the idea that we need to be poor people out there who committed a harm. Yes. But who said they will do it again? Do we have Chris Paul to see that? You know, there's a lot of talk about people hurting law enforcement, etc. If you look at the United States Civil Commission, they did a report on use of force, on violence against officers, etc. Most of the people that killed these officers were actually white. There were people from other parts of the world. The big part of the pie is actually blue, like this. And it's the white people that actually killed police officers in the United States. But if you have use of force against communities of color, turns out that use of force is most killing people of color. It goes all the way around. So the people of color that victimize the law enforcement are more so than those that are actually hurting law enforcement. So those are just some of the things that I want to highlight. Just one of some of the things I just want to leave at this table. Thank you. Thank you. Raul Rodriguez Jr., followed by John Willis, followed by Keith Hardini. Morning. Thanks for allowing us to speak to the body, and, uh, and good luck to you. Um, we like to hold everybody accountable, but I'd uh, really like to support law enforcement. They got a tough job. Uh, you know, everybody's up, they're getting it from all ends. Um, they do a great job. ICE does a great job. We need more ICE. I was just reading an article last week in West Covina five illegal aliens that have been in the country six days from Chile had tried to pull out a home invasion robbery in a stolen car, and then when the police finally caught up to them, they got arrested to fight the police. Like, we don't have enough criminals here, we gotta import more, and we can't even have ICE support the uh, hardened criminals that are in the jail, it's ridiculous. Um, no one wants to face a policeman at a hard time, but I mean, it's just part of society. Not everyone wants to behave and, uh, and play well. So we need police, we should support them. And I noticed the uh, LA County Sheriff's actually has 17,000 employees. Well, we hear very little about them misbehaving. I mean, there are a couple, couple stories, but I mean, it's not a perfect world, but it seems like a pretty low average. Like, I think uh, LA County Sheriff's are doing a great job, and thank you, and thank you for the Metro Police too. But as far as this guy right here, that suit fits you perfect, sir. That's really awesome. Because I think you forgot what you are. You're an LEO, law enforcement officer. Why don't you have a uniform on, sir, instead of the uniform of a social justice warrior? You are despicable. You need to protect the citizens of this country, not the illegal alien criminals. Get them the hell out of our country from the jails. When they're in jail, Get eyes to get them the hell out of here and get that ridiculous looking suit off and get your, the uniform of your officers on. Show some respect for your officer. Sir, Show some leadership. Sir, calm down, sir, and let, let's, let's knock off the personal attacks here, okay? Let's knock them off. Is that a legal order? Do you really have the uh, authority to tell me how to talk? Yeah. I'm not telling you how to talk. A person, you don't have to attack me. Apparently, I do. This person is responsible for the deaths of American citizens. This guy right here is a joke. The time is now up, please. Thank you very much. Please he called me back. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to take a moment please personal attacks are not helpful. They're not helpful. You don't need to personally attack anyone. You're here to express your opinion. And if your opinion is valid, you don't need to attack anyone. Thank you. And also, please refrain from clapping. Let's do what you do with the Board of Supervisors. You can put your hands up like this if you agree with something. This is how you applaud 
within a deaf community. Let's do that. So let's show some respect so we're not, we're not being um, too disruptive. Thank you so much. Please continue. Okay, Mr. Bonner, I'd like to remind you that that's our First Amendment right to be able to express ourselves, whether you like it or not. Amen. That's what it's called, our First Amendment right. And it's in our Constitution. That's where it's at, if you don't remember. First of all, I'd like to say that I am, the, we are the voice of the voiceless. We have too many American citizens being murdered because you, Mr. Villanueva, are allowing this to happen by not doing your job of law enforcement. You took a note. You took a note when you put your right hand up to acknowledge that you're the sheriff of Los Angeles. You're not, you're not doing your job when you allow illegals, those in this country illegally, to come here and murder sheriffs, policemen, and American citizens. It's wrong. You should know that. Now, uh, I've talked to you about this before. I'm gonna give you another chance, another option, okay? You have three options. First of all, you need to change your attitude about illegal immigration. Okay, and I'm gonna give you one of these so you maybe you'll remember what the options are. Okay, the second option is to resign. And if you don't wanna do that, we the people, the American people will take action and we can remove you from office because we have more power than you do. We have the power of the vote and we, we the people, will remove you from office when you don't wanna do your job of protecting American citizens. That is your number one oath that you took to serve and protect the American citizens of Los Angeles and the county. If you don't want to do that, we can remove you. So the choice is yours. You got three choices. And I like to say that we support ICE. We support law enforcement. Whether you're a sheriff, Los Angeles, Whatever county you work in, we support law enforcement 100%. We respect them and we want them to come home every day like anybody else. And we don't want any more people, American citizens, murdered because we, because you're allowing them to stay in this country. You're not allowing ICE to do their job. You need to do that. You need to allow ICE to do their job of taking the illegals out of this country and sending them back to the country of origin, regardless of where it's at. So, in closing, I'd like to ask you, please, I'm sure you have a conscience. I'm sure you don't want one of your family members being murdered by an illegal. I'm sure you don't. A child, a nephew, a brother, a sister, whoever, I'm sure you don't want that. So please reconsider what you're doing because it's wrong. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Keith Harvey, followed by Brian E., followed by Arthur Shopper. Uh, good morning, uh, commissioners. Yeah, my name is Keith Harvey. And I want to kind of deliver a more recent response. I think that is very important to remember. Uh, as author Daniel Horowitz, a senior editor of Conservative Review, said that the distinguishing characteristics of a strong, sovereign nation compared to an undeveloped country is the ability to monitor and control an external movement into its territory and the ability to apprehend and remove those who trespass on the national private property rights of the people of the United States. Yet, on every measure, we seem to fail, not just in our ability to prevent strangers from infiltrating our territory, but in monitoring and apprehending those who successfully remain in our country illegally. And all the murders that occur as a result of this failure are 100% avoidable. That's, a, that's pretty incredible. That's an incredible statement, and but true. Case in point is the murder by another undocumented illegal alien. This was brought up earlier. Immigrant, he was an immigrant uh, with a long history. This is a criminal history of prior convictions
prosecution for kidnapping, drug possession, battery on a police officer, trespassing, burglary, and he has also been diagnosed with a psychosis behavior, so psychosis back in 2016. I don't know if that's among the list of felonies that we were talking about last time that must be uh, identified. We will see today maybe if they have such a list of um, the crimes that have been uh, may be uh, called uh, lesser uh, crimes. But that concerns me and it should concern you. The U.S. Uh, immigration and ICE, uh, U.S. Immigration and Customs uh, Enforcement, they said that agents tried to deport this suspect, this same suspect, nine times before, but they were detained. In other words, their detainers were not honored in the Los Angeles and uh, Santa Clara counties. So I find that kind of uh, disturbing, and I hope that you do too. Um, so my final question would be to that, how is it that we the people of the United States are so heavily regulated or monitored in every aspect of our lives, yet somehow illegal infiltrators seem to successfully evade the juggernaut of Big Brother? <laughs> I like that term, that phrase, Big Brother. I mean, it's been used quite often, and uh, it's, it's, it's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Brian E. followed by Arthur Schomper, followed by Michelle Infante. Hello, thank you for entertaining so many voices today. My name is Brian. I am here to speak um, a little bit about what folks have been talking about back here, but from a different point of view. Uh, I also believe in injustice. I believe very heavily in it. I, I care very much about making sure people who are violent criminals are uh, held accountable. But I will say this. Uh, we know now that indeed immigrants, both documented and undocumented, are less likely to commit crime than, than citizens. Um, so the, the thing I'm here to ask you is I actually just want real justice. ICE has been uneven in its justice. It is cruel, and justice shouldn't be arbitrary. Please, uh, I was quiet while you spoke. So, We're trying the best we can, sir. How do you do? The thing that I ask of you is to keep an eye on what justice is for everybody. The Constitution doesn't just apply to people who have the good fortune to be born to citizens. It applies to everybody here. Um, so I, I, I do want justice. I do. I do. We may ask for sanctuary, we're not asking for a lawless, anarchic society. What we're asking for is for the law to be just, to not be arbitrary. Uh, I want to turn now, I, uh, Sheriff, I, I, um, I voted for you, and I, I got my friends to vote for you too, and uh, I, I had a lot of hope for, please, please, Dad, please. I, I you know, Sir, continue to address us. Sorry, yeah, okay. Uh, Let's talk directly to us. So you bet. You bet. Uh, I, I voted for you. I got, I got a lot of people to vote for you as well, and I, I had a lot of hope for, for what you would do, and I, I do appreciate the, the movements you've made towards making the jails more just and ice and whatnot. Some of the things I'm reading in the paper about, about oversight um, don't make me worried, and the rehiring of certain folks also make me worried, and I, I really do want to be. But when, when we're done with the term, I want to be proud of, of the vote, and I, I ask you to consider the people's voice on those subjects. The oversight, I think, is really important. The, the, the office has been tarnished for so long, and I, 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 I still have hope. So thank you for doing what you've done, and to keep moving in that direction. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Hello. Thank you. Arthur Schopper, followed by Michelle Infante, followed by Arnold Sachs. My name is Arthur Chopper. I'm a resident of Torrance, California. I met this man at a town hall in my city, and when sheriff's deputies were gunned down in East LA, he said that he had to go, but before that, he needed to take time for a photo op. That, to me, shows you right away where his priorities really lie. On my 
sure I hear the image of DeAndre Mitchell. This black life rushed into a fire, a burning building, to try to save four other lives. He didn't ask what their skin color was. He just wanted to save those lives. They all died. The building was set on fire by an illegal alien transient named Johnny Hosley Sanchez, who to this day stays in our jails, is fed by our tax dollars, and still the family will never get DeAndre has a daughter who will never see him again. I thought Black Lives Matter. I will set up a list of the test. To all of you who care about Black Lives, say his name. DeAndre Mitchell. DeAndre Mitchell. Thank you. I want to speak on other issues at this time because I'll have plenty to say about the immigration issue. First of all, I think this is an illegitimate sheriff. Judicial watch determined there are a million five hundred thousand voters who should not be on the voter rolls in Los Angeles County. We need we need to have a further audit, and I think that the board should present to the board of supervisors and say this is an illegitimate election. I won't go back. I'm going to share it all. He's a guy who put everybody's safety on the line. I did not agree with his argument about SB 54, but he opposed it because. It would require ICE to go into the communities. They wouldn't just go after MS-13. They go after grandma, grandpa, and the kids. Anybody who was illegal would get swept up and deported. I want criminal illegal aliens out of our county and out of our country. We have an illegitimate sheriff. I do not trust the outcome of the vote. We need to audit this. I think we should have a new election. Furthermore, and I don't know if the people in the audience the people who seem to be anti-law enforcement. I am not anti-law enforcement. I'm pro rule of law. And there is so much corruption in the LA County Sheriff's Department, whether it's Republican, Independent, or Democrat, who become the sheriff. Maybe we should talk about dismantling the entire county department and have either regional or allow for cities to have their own police departments and facilitate those cities who can't afford one. We need local control as much as possible. Otherwise, we're going to have domestic violence abusers, corrupt officials, the people who drive this guy's car are suddenly now high-ranking officials again in the department. Something is wrong with this picture. We do have a county, we have to have a county government, but maybe this county law enforcement agency needs to be dismantled because we can't seem to end this culture of corruption. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Michelle Infante, followed by Arnold Sachs. Good morning, commissioners, and good morning, Sheriff Villanueva. My name is Michelle Infante. I'm with the Union Power Now. Recently, I've had five families since I've been back from New York who contacted me who are very worried about their loved ones and sign. And I want to read to you, uh, Sheriff, what well, one of the uh, moms sent me. Her name is Doreen. Michelle, they still have my son in the mental health section of the jail wearing a lookalike velvet dress with no underwear and clothes underneath. This was very sad to see, and there's an emoji with her crying. My son was able to call me when he was at court, and he told me that they are keeping him away from making phone calls to me. He also said that he hasn't had a shower or brushed his teeth for many days. And now he feels that they are trying to kill him, and he is in fear of his life in there. He told me that if he doesn't make it out, if he doesn't make it out, know that he, that he loves me and his wife and his children. He said that he will never harm himself, but he's afraid that they will. That's not the only person that's contacted me, Sheriff. I've had five families, and one of the families that contacted me was the aunt of a boy who committed suicide supposedly a couple weeks ago. And that family was full of trauma, and I've been talking to them now for a couple of weeks, crying all the time on the phone to me, telling me that. Your officers went to the hospital, and they were standing over the bed trying to talk to this young man who was not able to do that. He was definitely brain dead. And at 1 a.m. in the morning, the family was going to be donating the organs uh, to someone. So I want you to know while you're sitting here exactly what's going on and maybe things that you don't know about. And if you're interested in knowing about the other five families, I'm more than happy 
to take the time out to sit down and talk to you and give you their um, their statements and their comments regarding what's happened to their loved ones. Thank you. Thank you. Our last speaker, Arnold Sachs. Yes, good morning. I'm Arnold Sachs, and uh, it's been a while since I've gone to meetings. I used to go to the Board of Supervisors meeting and rip them every Tuesday. As a matter of fact, they changed the speaking rules because of me. We used to be able to speak on all the items. You're in here talking about the Sheriff's Commission. Your Board of Supervisors is a $31 billion industry. They get 12 people to show up for a meeting, and you can only speak for three minutes. The Board of Supervisors had oversight over the Sheriff's. The sheriff, elected sheriff, has no oversight, has no union oversight over his employees. That's the Board of Supervisors. So all the people that are talking about the Constitution and all this stuff, anybody up here familiar with Tabalos versus Garcetti? Anybody? Anybody over here? Tabalos versus Garcetti was a court case. Gil Garcetti held it was a Supreme Court case. Gil Garcetti had 2008, reading from the newspaper article. Uh, it states, a Los Angeles County lawyer who said he was demoted for having revealed the police officer may have supplied false information in a search warrant. The court's conservatives sided with their employee. A government and entity has broader discretion to restrict speech when it acts in its role as employer. They rule the government can lie. That's the Supreme Court. You know what I say? So when you come in here and you say, we need this and we need that, you know what I say? That name rings a bell. Anybody know why? Well, his dad is the mayor. Gil Garcetti, Supreme Court, it's okay to lie to the public. So who, who, who looks out for the public? County Council, any county council out here? County Council is a private office hired by the, court, the Board of Supervisors. They have no civil service protections. So they just rule for the court, the county. And I appreciate the hell out of you having this meeting here. I was on my way over to go to the board. And I'm thinking, what am I going to say? And then I look at the agenda, and there's an agenda item. They're looking for money for some bullshit. They're getting tax money from pot. They can't get big wheelbarrows big enough to put the freaking money in, and they can't spend it. You know why? Because it's Pot money, it's illegal. So what do you do? Well, you have a rainy day fund, maybe. And you say, we'll put the pot money towards a rainy day fund, and we'll take the rainy day fund money out. Yeah, I know, you're shaking your head. This is real stuff. Why don't you address that? And then maybe you'll get some results of what you want. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes the speakers. Okay, we are um, moving to the agendized item regarding the immigration ad hoc committee report. Um, obviously, this is an issue uh, that is extremely sensitive, emotional, um, not only for our community, but for the country. Um, so this, the committee, the ad hoc committee, has been working on recommendations for a while, and we're going to take up, take up this item. I want to turn it over to uh, the chair of the ad hoc, Commissioner Rivera. Thank, thank you, Madam Chair. And I want to extend uh, a welcome to uh, the sheriff and, um, and Deputy Lee I'm sorry, I don't have your, your title, but thank you for, for being here. Um, I actually think, Madam Chair, that in light of the fact that we have just recently received the, um, the new changes to the policy that we need more time to actually digest the, um, the effect of these policies. So first I want to start, uh, Sheriff, by saying 
we really appreciate the steps that you and your department have taken to uh, to start getting nice out of the jails. We see that as, as a good first step, and we, as you know, have been working on a report to try to give our layperson recommendations about where the dividing line should be. And what I'm saying today is that I think we would like to sit down with you and your staff, whoever you delegate, to try to better understand where you're going with that, or you and your administration understand our recommendations so that we can take all that into account and bring that back and make any modifications if necessary. But I think any kind of vote today is, is premature because we would like to have that kind of dialogue. We, when um, you were elected, your undersheriff then, uh, Leva, welcomed that kind of dialogue and it just hasn't happened yet for whatever reason. So we would ask that, um, like I said, that you delegate some staff to meet with us so that we can really have a fruitful dialogue on that and then see if there's any modifications that we need to make on a report uh, uh, for that. But let, let me address really quickly one of the reasons why we have spent so much time, this is not fully addressed to you, Sheriff, but to the audience members. Uh, I, like many of you, thought, yes, it makes sense that we should try to come up with some, some method of some policy, right, to take into account some of these very, very serious crimes. And when we created this ad hoc committee, um, we met with members of the public, and a group of moms came to us, and in Spanish said, no estamos reportando, no estamos reportando, we're not reporting. What, what their comment was, unless there's a real trust with the sheriff's department, they are not reporting violent crimes to law enforcement. Now, all of you think about that. What does that mean? By not reporting, that means that offenders of violent crimes are out there. Those complaints never go to the sheriff's department. They never go to the LAPD. Why? Because there's a, a mistrust. For whatever reason, we're not here to blame other administrations what happened in the past, but there's a real mistrust of law enforcement and a belief that if it works with ICE, that their family members will be imperiled, their kids will be picked up on their way to school, and that's happened. So I heard it again and again, no estamos reportando, no vamos a reportar. And, and that had a real effect on me. So that's why we, we're volunteers. We're, we're doing this, giving you our best uh, layperson opinion. But since now you have started to change those policies, we would like the, the opportunity to, uh, to reflect on those. So, Madam Chair, I, I don't want to go through all the recommendations now. I've done that before. We've gotten some comments from, um, from the public in the last few weeks as well. So we've been making some tweaks to that, but I think it's, it's appropriate for us really to have, like I said, a dialogue with, with the department in the, in the next few weeks or, or month. Um, okay, I would like to uh, recommend that the full committee meet before this item is placed on whatever appropriate date for the next agenda item when, when you when you met together as a group, had an opportunity to meet with the sheriff, have considered uh, different recommendations. I know that uh, Commissioner Bonna has a set of ideas that he would like to have considered by the ad hoc. So I think that if everybody's in agreement, um, but we may, okay. Any other commentary about putting the uh, putting this off the agenda? I'm not going to disagree with the ultimate conclusion that Commissioner Vera has uh, put forward that it may be premature to take a uh, vote by the full commission on the report and the recommendations. But I want to express my concern that the ad hoc committee's recommendations, um, uh, several of which I have grave concerns about, particularly recommendations 1, 9, and 10, and I have grave concerns about them because I think the effect of those would prevent the sheriff from transferring individuals who are not legally in our country who have committed serious and violent crimes of the type that are listed in SB 54, uh, which include rape, they include uh, robbery, armed robbery, they include burglary and the like. What my concern is, is that uh, once the ad hoc committee's uh, report was uh, made public, which goes back to November of last year, 
it created the impression that this report and those recommendations were preliminary recommendations of the Civilian Oversight Commission, and they are not. Uh, the Commission as a whole has never voted or approved or endorsed any of the recommendations of the ad hoc committee's report, much less the report itself. I'm further troubled, and I, I've been, uh, I've expressed this before, that uh, with respect to the recommendations uh, that have the effect, in my opinion, of preventing transfer to of individuals who have com committed, have been convicted of SB 54 offenses, uh, that would have the effect of preventing that transfer to uh, ICE uh, is is misguided. I, I strongly believe that that will impact negatively on public safety, Sheriff, uh, if that were to occur. And uh, I believe the actually the first and foremost responsibility of the sheriff and the sheriff's department actually is the public safety of our community. So if there's an opportunity uh, where people are not legally in the United States who have committed serious and violent crimes to remove them from our country, I believe we should do so. So the other part of the report that I, I'm really troubled by, and I certainly would ask the ad hoc committee to go back and, and take a look at this again, is the uh, if in fact you're preventing the trans, if you're recommending and the sheriff were to adopt these recommendations, which I hope you wouldn't, Sheriff, um, particularly recommendations one, nine, and ten. But if if you're doing that, you you really must do a public safety evaluation of what the impact would that would be if you release, for example, a convicted burglar, armed robber, rapist who is illegally in the United States back into the community. Then I think you ought to also consider the secondary consequences of, uh, of not transferring serious and violent criminals to, to ICE while they're, after they've been convicted and they've served their sentence in county jail. I think you ought to also consider the, what, I, what has to be an unintended consequence of that, which is really forcing ICE agents into the community to locate and find those individuals which always, as everybody in law enforcement knows, creates a dangerous situation for law enforcement, for ICE agents, for local law enforcement, for people in the neighborhood, for people in the house where the arrest is taking place, and also has the effect that if ICE is there, it's going to, uh, I think it's inevitable, they're going to actually pick up other people that are illegally in the United States who haven't committed any crimes. And we really don't necessarily want that. So you're actually forcing that to happen. And I just, what I guess that the bottom line would be is to make clear that these recommendations, particularly one, nine and 10, have not been adopted by the full commission. And I would really, really urge the ad hoc committee, and I'm not a member of the ad hoc committee, but to, to take a look at those recommendations with a view toward uh, eliminating them. Thank you, Madam Chair. Commissioner Ocean. Um, so, one thing I just want to be clear about is that the recommendations address not only people who are undocumented, but non-citizens generally, right? So if there's someone who may have legal status, but, that, but ICE has an interest in interviewing them, for example, a green card holder, or others with uh, legal status in this country, they're also subject to our recommendations. So I just want to make sure that it's not, that we understand the, the population whom this, this is addressed potentially. Um, and I also don't want to necessarily delve into the, each of the recommendations, because that's not, I understand that's not the direction that, that we're going. But I do want us to be clear that there is a sense of urgency here, and we cannot continue to push our recommendations. We can't keep kicking the, the can down the road. We need to take a position, especially given the real fear that exists in our immigrant communities and the misperceptions and the confusion that exists around um, the sheriff's relationship with immigration and ICE. So I strongly, um, you know, I'm, I'm a member of the ad hoc committee and so I will commit to meeting as soon as possible to communicating with the sheriff's department at least the recommendations of the ad hoc committee, which it is true, um, are not is not the position of the commission, but it certainly is at least as of 
this dated um, November 15th, the thinking of four members of this commission, we will continue to discuss them, of course, and um, we will absolutely, I think, consider some of the objections that have been raised by our colleagues. But at the end of the day, at this point, this is the thinking of at least th four people who have spent a lot of time thinking about immigration, and we cannot continue to postpone our recommendations. Um, yes, I um, am one of the members of the ad hoc committee, um, and uh, last month, Sheriff, uh, there was a presentation by uh, Commander Marhone on uh, the, the very generalized position of your new policy regarding ICE and immigration, particularly related to the jail. and. There were a number of questions that um, have not yet been answered that were raised with Commander Marhan, and I don't know if you're prepared to talk about them today, but one in particular was the uh, concern of myself and many others that the um, uh, public website be maintained um, not only for um, any member of the public who may need and want information about um, their loved ones in the jail, um, but also accessible to, um, to ICE and law enforcement. And one of the troubling responses from Commander Morhone was when I asked, um, is it the sheriff's position to continue um, on a permanent basis, um, the, uh, the public website, his response was very um, cagey, uh, to put it in the vernacular. His response was, well, for today it is, and I, that raises all sorts of bells and whistles. I'm a lawyer, and when somebody answers for today, uh, that raises the specter that tomorrow your department may be making significant changes on the public website. So that is a, um, uh, a key matter that hopefully we can address unless you are able to talk about that today. And the other question relates to the, um, uh, your use of contractors uh, in place of ICE to um, uh, pick up uh, inmates who um, have been determined uh, to uh, uh, go to ICE jurisdiction for the purposes of, uh, of deportation. But um, I think based on those two issues, you can understand that there is a, uh, a real concern, not only on the part of the ad hoc committee, the commission, members of the public, because there is a wealth of confusion uh, and a lack of understanding as to where you really intend to go on this issue. So I applaud um, Commissioner Vera's request for a meeting as soon as possible with all of the ad hoc members, and uh, if you are able to address any of those issues today, that would be welcome. Thank you. Can I just add, uh, <clears throat> I'm the newest member of the commission and also the newest member of the immigration uh, ad hoc committee. And when I first came to the meeting in, in November, this was the first agenda item that I had to deal with. Um, so I would urge though, and echoing Commissioner Ocean's point of view, of we need a sense of urgency. We need to get something done uh, as soon as possible. Uh, and to consider everyone's point of view. It took me a while to even catch up with, uh, there's a whole line of, uh, beyond the November report, there's a whole line of other discussions about, and, and written discussions about what's going on with the immigration problem. So I would urge both the Sheriff's Department and, our, and myself to go back and review all those documents and uh, come up with a report. Thank you very much. Can I add one other thing on the, uh subject of the action by the sheriff to essentially eliminate one-third of the um, Wobbler offenses, uh, since that's separate and apart from the report here. Uh, uh, what what can... Uh, you know, I, are you, are you going to come... I, I would like to... I, I'm, from, 
Excuse me? Are you going to cut me off from actually uh, well, I thought addressing you were asking, something? I, I thought you were asking me if you could. Well, I always ask permission, but I mean, and I'm willing to... Well, wait, I was going to comment on wait, it, but I'm go ahead. I'm going to my turn, but... Uh, go ahead. Some, okay. Go ahead, Commissioner Bonner. Okay, Bonner. so the, the concern, I mean, uh, Commissioner Rubin talked about one concern, but Commander Morhone, when he, when he spoke to us uh, at our last meeting, uh, basically informed us that a decision had been made by the Sheriff's Department to remove one-third of the uh, of, of the offenses I believe these are all SB 54 <laughs> offenses um, uh, after some review had been done at that time by the way he was not in a position to tell us which offenses had been actually removed uh, we have subsequently thank you sheriff gotten a list of the 50 or of the 150 uh, uh, offenses that have been removed. Uh, first of all, these offenses are called, um, these violations are called the misdemeanor crimes list, and yet every one of the offenses that have been removed is not a misdemeanor under the penal code. They're all punishable as wobblers. That is to say, the, the state legislature made a judgment, state legislature made a judgment that they were all serious enough to warrant state prison time. Uh, so we've learned now, uh, at least I understand and have been informed, please disabuse me if I'm wrong, that there was a working group of the Sheriff's Department with um, apparently the ACLU, uh, other representatives of um, uh, activist organizations, and uh, with the uh, County Public Defender's Office. Uh, insofar as I know, that working group did not have any consultation with any any member of the uh, Civilian Oversight Commission. It had no consultation with the Inspector General and amazingly had no consultation with, or at least part of the group did not include, the, the District Attorney's Office, which is the only other county agency besides the Sheriff's Department that has the responsibility of public safety for our county. So I'm really concerned about the process that it wasn't transparent and that it did not include, I think, uh, all the voices should, should have been included before 50 very serious offenses were lopped off and made ineligible for transfer to ICE for people that are convicted of them. So the, the crimes that have been lopped off, by the way, include, uh, and I'm just going to list a few of them, threatening a juror. Threatening a juror has been removed. So if you're, a, you're illegally in the country, you're being prosecuted and you threaten a juror, you're convicted of threatening a juror you, under, your, under this list that's been developed. That person uh, cannot be transferred to ICE, right? Uh, even though under SB 54, you would be entitled to, because that's an offense that is an SB 54 offense. It includes uh, hazing that results in death or great bodily injury. That's been removed. It includes penetration by penis or foreign object with special circumstances. Uh, it includes falsely impersonating a police officer or another in official capacity. People that are convicted of these offenses illegally in the country, you've just taken off the list. I mean, I, I don't, so I, I, would, I, I would think that there would be a public safety analysis and that there would be some vetting with a broader group than the ACLU and uh, the Public Defender's Office before uh, you come up with a list that lops off 50 offenses. Possession of a wallet gun, bribery of a state official. I mean, so, I mean, we wouldn't, somebody who bribed a state official who's been convicted of that, who is illegally in the United States, we wouldn't transfer that person to ICE for deportation. I, I don't understand it. Now, there are some on here. I'm not going through all of them. Maybe there are some that could be lopped off. I don't know, but I think that has, there has to be a very thoughtful approach, and I, I don't think this process, Sheriff, in all honesty, was the kind of process that uh, would be uh, uh, appropriate to essentially exercise what is discretion to lop off a very large number of fences that are otherwise subject to SB 54, which itself was a compromise, as you know, in the state legislature. So the, in any event, I'll, I'll just, I'll rest it there. I just want it that then perhaps the ad hoc subcommittee uh, for immigration should also take a look at this issue. I'd appreciate it if they did. Um, you know, uh, we've, we're, we're, we're going to honor the request of the chair to move this item to vote at another time, uh, hopefully in April, assuming that the 
committee can meet and look at all of these issues that have been brought up today, and also the fact that the report focused on the last sheriff's administration, so this will give us a little time to interface with the current sheriff's department. But I, I would like uh, Sheriff Villanueva, if you, you've heard some things, is there anything you want to say before we, we remove this item uh, for, for voting from the agenda? Um, yes, thank you, ma'am. Uh, three, three items in particular, and one is, first is the list of 50 that were removed were by and large property crimes, and they were all, they were filed as misdemeanors, not felonies. So the essence, none of these ones that are filed as felonies uh, make some ineligible to be transferred via the SUV. They were sentenced as misdemeanors, Sheriff. They were not filed as misdemeanors. I can assure you that, and I think Ms. Rubin, who's a former deputy district attorney, would say that they were. They may have been pleaded down to misdemeanors, or but the effect under state law, if you're sentenced to less than state prison time, is does mean they were charged as misdemeanors. Well, I don't want to debate back and forth on the litigate this right here, sir, but. Uh, Please continue, Sheriff. I'm sorry. Thank you. I understand that uh, the personnel and this, this group that went through the comb through the entire list to see what could be uh, reduced that would be appropriate. That's a, the conclusion they arrived at, and I'll support their conclusion. But if you notice from the cry of people in the audience with the signs, uh, someone saying they were going too fast, someone. on the reporting of any significant crime or serious crime. For example, um, sexual assault. I have a 1% swing. That means I have dozens and dozens of rape cases that were never reported, which means I have dozens and dozens of predators roaming the streets of Los Angeles County who were never held accountable for their crimes. That's how serious it is. And it's really easy to, to um, you know, advocate one side or another about, oh my God, this or that. But when you look at the big picture, and just the sheer size of the population of LA County, any shift in any direction is gonna generate a lot of victims. And my goal is to reduce the total number of victims possible. And that's the only thing I can do responsibly. And SB 54 strikes a balance. However, we have to recognize it was a, um, it was a political decision ultimately because it was not the starting point. If you look at the first piece of legislation versus the last, our uh, serious violent felonies uh, that eligible for SB 54 being transferred to the custody of ICE, yes they are. And some people don't understand that or misrepresenting that fact, but they are. Are we doing everything that we can within our power to ensure the undocumented population has no fear of local law enforcement? We're doing everything we possibly can. We're doing outreach, we're talking to all the different advocacy groups, we're making sure at the station level we are not using any information that has to do with immigration enforcement in our day-to-day uh, -day operations in the field where we're interacting with our community. So I take this uh, position very seriously. There's still a lot of work we have to do. We have to overcome a lot of doubts about the relationship between local law enforcement and federal immigration enforcement. And uh, I'm not gonna do their job. I don't expect them to do my job. And we're just gonna keep the two apart and we're not going to get in their way. I don't expect them to get in our way either. And that's how there should be that proper relationship between federal immigration enforcement and local law enforcement. Because our job is public safety, and we don't get to pick and choose whose safety we provide. We have to provide for the entire county of Los Angeles. And uh, that's on that issue. And now there's two other issues that I think you rose. One was about, um, I think we should Go ahead. Contractors. Okay. The use of the contractor, <coughs> until we can uh, develop a Star Trek uh, 
tell the transporter we're going to have to use somebody at some point to go from point A to point B. Physically impossible to do it outside of that. But the actual presence of uniformizers in the jails was what I sought to eliminate from the beginning, and we did that. And uh, that was the most damaging. Visually, in terms of the impact in the uh, inmate population, seeing uniform ICE agents operating, interviewing inmates inside the college facilities, that was the most damaging in effect that I was trying to eliminate. And we succeeded in eliminating that. But we're still carrying out the obligations of SB 54. So we're not missing any beat at all. We're doing that. The, um, there was a third item. It had to do with the, the public website. Oh, yeah. about the public, website. public website, again, this is one where you have competing demands because ICE is using that information to do their enforcement actions. But we also have citizens who have to pick up their loved one in the county jail. They could be have mental impairments, physical ailments. They could be uh, disabled, all kinds of things. They need to know when their loved one is coming out of jail so they can arrange for the transportation. We don't have a tragedy in our hands, which has happened in the past. So it has a very important public safety aspect, the, the public website. And uh, does ICE about my use that? They probably do. However, they don't have any more access than anybody else as a, as a general public does. And they're not operating in the county jails, at the stations, or in our courthouses. So to, to the degree that we can separate the two functions, as best physically possible, we've already achieved that. So we're actually making great strides. We've done this in less than four months, and we're going to continue moving ahead. We welcome all the input from all of you. Have very different uh, perspectives, even within the own commission, which is fine. And that's the whole purpose of having a, a lively public debate. And then so forth, and so doing, we're going to advance the public's interest. Uh, so. Is it, um, is it your commitment to maintain the public website despite the competing interests? Yes, we have to, because there's a greater interest in preserving the, the safety of each person gets released from the jail that needs to have arrangements with their family. Okay. Any other comments from the commissioners for, for the time being? Okay. Um, Here's what I'd like to do. Uh, County Council has advised me that since we're removing this topic as a vote, we do not necessarily, we do not have to entertain any public comment. Mm. Hold on, no, no, hold on, wait. You call me. You know what? Be no, more patient. So what I'm gonna do is since there are 19 people who have signed up, but I, I, that's a lot of folks. And we are going to continue this. Um, the uh, committee, the ad hoc committee uh, has been charged with meeting and discussing and collaborating when possible and get as much information from, from the sheriff as, as, as the department is now operating. It's been asked to look at some of the public safety issues of any of the recommendations. And so I look forward to that happening. We all know, we all look forward to hearing the results of this next period of time for the process of the ad hoc committee to continue. So what we're gonna to do today is since there's so many people, plus this will be continued since we're not voting today, but instead of having three minutes per person, we're gonna ask people to comment, because you'll have, you'll have more time to comment later on at other meetings, a minute and a half per person so that we can get through today. We have to leave here by one o'clock. We may not stay beyond one o'clock. So let's do that. Anybody of you please call the first uh, speaker. Yes, uh, first speaker, Rose Reese, followed by Carrie Hazen, followed by Wanda. I'm a citizen with a sign, not a people with a sign, loser. Tax being free for Good morning, Commissioners. Thank you for the amount of effort on the immigration ad hoc report that you've done. As LA is a city of sanctuary, the Commission has responsibility to enable local laws to go above the minimum of SB 54 to protect our immigrant community. Recommendation number one states that LASD should not provide ICE with more information than it provides
17 policy on making release information available only to the inmate, their family, and lawyer. Here's a good example, here's a good SB 54 example from San Francisco, which incidentally is my hometown. From January to May 1st, 2018, ICE had asked for notification of 400 immigrant in inmates, and none were responded with release dates, as San Francisco would not share the data. In LA, the vast majority of individuals released from county jail and deported by ICE are for low-level, nonviolent crimes. These are not dangerous criminals being released into the community, and they have already served their time. Just as in San Francisco, the release date should not be shared with the public. In summary, the commission needs to push for our local laws that go more than the minimum as we could before, and one way is not to share data with ICE. Thank you. Carrie Kaiser, followed by Von Beck, followed by Greg Soska. Uh, regarding Commissioner Bonner's letter that poses several recommendations from the Immigration Ad Hoc Committee, in justifying his opposition, I found that Commissioner Bonner was using the same scare tactics employed by Jim McDonald. Uh, for example, while Bonner specifies rape as one of the serious or violent felonies someone could commit and uh, still, quote, walk right out of jail and back into our community, he fails to mention that according to the Sheriff's Department in 2016, for example, uh, less than 0.4% of all transfers were for a rape conviction. The reality is in Los Angeles in 2017, reports of sexual assault among Latinos dropped by 25%, and reports of domestic violence dropped by 10%, uh, declines that former LAPD chief Beck said were due to fear of the federal government. So if we're truly concerned about sexual assaulters walking around in our communities, and with protecting victims and potential victims from assault, and our focus should be on creating a strong separation between ICE and the LA Sheriff's Department. Thank you, Vaughn Beck, followed by Gary Sisko, followed by Michael Greer. Well, here we go. It's extremely depressing to see and listen to the large body politicians sitting in their extra large chairs. I'm sitting in there, won't spill baloney and pop the tripe. It's so damn pathetic. I do hope and pray that these arrogant blowhards are punished for the advocating and aiding and abetting hordes of illegal aliens that bring their crimes to our sovereign borders and our great nation. Support ICE. A day of reckoning draws nigh. Y'all have a good day. Thank you, Greg Sisko, followed by Michael Greer, followed by Deborah Falk. Um, thank you again, Mr. Vanell. I'm sorry I ruined your name that you made it here today. Because I think it's important that you keep uh, some, some kind of uh, impact from the other side. We want safety. I don't think your progressive impact of taking us out of the jails uh, is making us safe. Um, according to the Sheriff's Association, they too agree that uh, taking ICE out of the jails does not keep us safe. So I um, appreciate you considering that. We'll be here every meeting to comment on this. We made a special trip for the ad hoc committee. I know three people who had our view that not to implement SB 54. At the ad hoc committee, I showed up special. That was back in November or whenever it was. And for seven meetings, I've asked you all to kick SB 54 to the curb and to disband the ad hoc committee. But y'all just ignoring me. And tyranny can only progress forward when good men do nothing. Well, Mr. Bonner, for a long time, you did nothing. Now we have a good woman in charge and she gets the same responsibility. Tyranny can only move forward when good men, and in this case, good women, do nothing. I'm asking you to do something. Thank you. Michael Greer, followed by Deborah Falk, followed by Carolina Goodman. <clears throat> Sheriff, it isn't your job to find a balance between the two sides. It's your job to enforce the law. You took an oath of office to do that. Um, Commissioner Bonner, I really appreciate your words. I appreciate your letter. It's very nice to know that there's someone on this 
commission who is clear-headed about the rule of law. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah and Bob, followed by Carolina Goodman, followed by Robin Vidston. Thank you for the opportunity to speak, Chef Van Oyvitz. Very nice to see you in person. Um, I also voted for you, and I'm glad that I did. However, I have been very um, concerned about some of the actions that you've taken in office and some of the things that you said this morning. Um, when you say that you are doing everything in your power to build trust and reduce the number of victims in the community, uh, I don't actually see it that way. Um, and in that, I believe that we are putting people in greater danger by giving them the sense that they are now safer from um, ICE and federal immigration in our jails when in fact, according to several people, including um, Under Sheriff Faber when he was here last month, nothing has really changed as far as um, how immigrants are treated coming out of the jails. Um, the idea that the optics are what matters, I don't entirely buy and um, I'm, I'm very concerned that that's the choice that you've chosen to make rather than to actually do something that would earn the trust of the community as opposed to just show them that we are theoretically trustworthy. Um, I also don't think that we have to is a good answer when it, it comes to keeping the website public. Um, obviously, as Rose said, there were ways of dealing with um, informing family members and lawyers of inmates imminent release before the website went public, and so there should be ways of doing that now. Thank you. Thank you, Carolina Goodman, followed by Robin Vinston, followed by Dorothy Moore. Good morning, commissioners. I'm Carolina Goodman with the League of Women Voters of Los Angeles. We strongly supported SB 54. And we understand that under SB 54, transfers are discretionary, not required. I appreciate Sheriff saying that immigration enforcement is the federal government's role, and it is not the job of LASD to voluntarily assist ICE in any way. That means that voluntary sharing of information with ICE must stop Release dates should be made available only to inmates, their families, and counsel, unless there's a federal warrant. That also means that LASD must stop participating with ICE in joint task forces that involve immigration enforcement. All individuals who have served their sentences, I want to underscore all individuals who have serve their sentences, have an opportunity to become productive members of their communities. The Los Angeles community expects you, Sheriff, to focus on public safety and leave immigration enforcement to ICE. Thank you very much. Thank you, Robin Vinston, followed by Dorothy Moore, followed by Scott Doyle. Dorothy Moore, followed by Scott Doyle, followed by Paul Suck. Hi, I'm Dorothy Moore from the South Bay, and I'm a physician, and I'm very grateful for the Ad Hoc Committee's efforts. I previously testified to you about the permanent harmful effects of ICE detentions on U.S. citizens and their families and what happens to the children. I told you about my neighbors' and friends' experiences with ICE. Now we have the ripple effects. My neighbors don't even want our information on their cell phones. They're afraid of having their citizenships hard-fought hard being taken away. Uh, they live in fear. I mean, look at me. I have no worries about walking down my street without papers or a passport, but that's not true of everyone. I'm not worried about my citizenship being taken away. And when I testified, I previously represented about 1,600 people in three indivisible groups. Our numbers have grown to now 2,250 voters who want no ICE involvement. I'm also here for those that are too afraid to speak. So I wasn't surprised by the election results. We, uh, we want no involvement with ICE, we want the police and sheriff's departments to have the trust of the community again, and we support the committee's recommendations 
but aware of politispeak and the qualifying of uniformed ICE. Uh, so we are aware and we support the committee. Thank you. Thank you, Scott Doyle, followed by Paul Sack, followed by Raul Rodriguez. Good morning. Um, on the one hand, I'm, I'm a little frustrated that this issue keeps getting kicked down the road, but I also understand um, that you've been juggling a lot of other issues and appreciate uh, Commissioner Ocean's uh, comment re regarding um, urgency. Um, I, I don't wish to rehash those other issues that have been occupying your time, um, but at an earlier meeting, um, the sheriff raised the specter with regard to deputy discipline of a kangaroo court, and I'd like to offer that as a way of looking at the transfer issue. Um, this may be a little bit of a stretch, um, but I don't think too much to describe the process whereby um, undocumented immigrants and non-citizens who have served their time are without even given a chance to take a breath of free air, um, immediately transferred to ICE, um, and then likely on to some facility like Adelanto. Um, it, with this kangaroo court, the judge and jury are faceless and hidden behind bureaucratic procedure, but that doesn't change the reality of the consequences. Um, transfer sounds like a neat and painless word, um, but it can't hide the fact that this amounts to a second sentence, one without due process, one that in some cases um, translates into a, a death sentence. Um, and as other people have commented, I don't think um, LASD should be in the business of facilitating that second sentence. Thank you. Thank you. Paul Sub, followed by Raul Rodriguez Jr., followed by John Willis. Good morning. Um, it's very traumatic hearing all this stuff. Um, just because of my own personal experiences, many of you know about me, but also because of the families that I support every day, they call me, they say what's going on, people that want to know. I do so much of this work, I get calls from out of state, families are reaching out and asking what can we do over here. They've taken my husband, I can't pay a bill this month, we're about to be houseless, because I speak them up from the jail, et cetera. So these are complex questions. A lot of things to think about but just a couple of comments in terms of detainers you know I've seen those things they're just pieces of paper signed by an ICE agent they don't have any judges signature on there they're not valid and people are not lawfully detained beyond the time of their release so detainers hold no legal merit they're just a formality of all things and as Scott was saying transfers Sounds nice. We transfer money from bank account to bank account, but when we transfer people, that's a more complex issue. And so I just want to encourage us to really think about the consequences of what happens when that occurs, the perceptions within the community, and even in terms of using contractors to focus on G4S, that just gives community the perception that there's still stuff going on with ICE and people are still getting deported via the Sheriff's Department. So for them, perception is reality. Okay. Okay, we're gonna take a 10 minute break and then we'll come back to the, uh, for the rest of the people who are, um, wanna give some testimony. And then we have two uh, really good items still to go. So back in 10 minutes, thank you.